Ignition running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. It's nine after the hour. I'm Eric Erickson. This is WSB, the phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. I, I, first of all, I, I need to say if you, I'm assuming you've heard now Jamie Dupree's voice back on the radio. And I realize it sounds robotic because it is computerized. And I just, I, first I, I want to say welcome back to Jamie. Uh, it's good to hear his voice again. Uh, but two, I, I want to say uh, to the folks at Cox um, that it, it stays like this. I'm proud to work for a company that continued to invest in a radio reporter who lost his voice. Uh, because I know enough to know that at, at most radio companies, um, he would know, would have long ago been off the payroll. Uh, and he's back now. Uh, and that's just, it, it's it's nice to work for good people who treat their employees like that and, and invest in them and aren't willing to ditch them at, at the earliest opportunity when something like this happens. That's that's refreshing. Now, I want to spend as much time as it takes to walk you through the immigration situation because so much of what is happening uh, is being distorted by the media against the Trump administration, uh, the media having joined La Resistance. Now, I am not a fan. Let me just put this up out front. I'm not a fan of, of keeping kids from their parents. I am not a fan of, of the separation policy. I, I do think we're fighting illegality with immorality and doing it. But you need to you need to keep that in mind as I defend what the administration overall is is doing, because so much of it has been madly misreported. First of all, the media continues to say that we're seeing a decrease in immigration in this illegal immigration into the country uh, because of Trump. And that's not true. When Donald Trump first got elected, there was a decline in illegal immigration. It has since spiked, and the reason it has spiked is because the situation south of the border in Mexico has completely come unglued. That country is failing as a nation state, and I mean that with no hyperbole intended. It is failing as a nation state. Individual city-states and, in some cases, individual towns in Mexico are forming their own governments because the national government in Mexico has failed. There is a war with the drug cartels going on. What the drug cartels are now doing is they're capitalizing on this violence to flood the American border with refugees uh, so that they can also flood the border with drug mules to import drugs into the United States uh, of of harder and harder varieties, uh, meth and cocaine and whatnot. And one of the reasons they're having to do this is because of legalization of marijuana in the United States, the Mexican drug cartels were seeing a decline in the purchasing of marijuana. And so they're having to increase runners into the United States of other drugs to get them through the border. One of the things they're doing is they are incentivizing unaccompanied minors and minors with people posing as their parents flooding border checkpoints so that hopefully a few people can slip through into the United States and and run drugs for them. That is legitimately happening. It's not the only thing happening. There are also in Further south of Mexico, in Central American countries like Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, there is social instability there, and people are f- fleeing there. We've got a lot of amnesty, a lot of uh, people seeking asylum, not amnesty, asylum coming into this country. There are also American laws at stake. I want to break these down for you so you actually have a fair picture of what's happening and why it's happening. So. Let me play you first some audio from my friend Ben Dominich, the publisher of The Federalist, uh, who was on CBS, uh, Face the Nation on Sunday, who put some of this in perspective for you that much of the media is ignoring. I certainly agree with Jeff when it comes to the ability of the administration to change this. But I think that we're kind of the focus on these kids, while I certainly understand it from a media perspective, is ignoring what is really driving these factors. Why do we have a 200 percent year-over-year year increase in the in the number of people coming across. Why do we have the biggest month-to-month increase between February and March that we've seen since 2011? And the answer to that is the activity of the Mexican cartels, who use these migrants as essentially a distraction to clog systems as they are able to funnel things across the border. In the last week, we saw two more political candidates in Mexico murdered in broad daylight, one a mayor running for Congress right across the Rio Grande, uh, another a mayor who you know has been a reformer fighting against the cartels 
cartels. That brings the total to 113 political candidates in Mexico who have been murdered by the cartels uh, in less than a year. That, Mexico's uh, political violence situation is uh, something that is not going to be solved when it comes to driving these types of migrations. Uh, and that's going to require things that I'm not sure the Congress is really willing to grasp with the kind of support and diplomacy uh, and activity to prevent uh, our southern neighbor from becoming a failed state. And it's happening. And he's right. I don't know that Republicans right now understand that in their opposition to foreign aid, uh, our southern border is becoming destabilized and much of that violence is spilling over into the United States. We need to engage at a diplomatic military level in order to stop the refugee crisis of people fleeing into the United States to to get away from that. But another point here is the change in the Obama administration policy. You see, the, the Democrats treated illegal immigration as a traffic ticket where you were ticketed and released. You were caught and released and given a court date to show up to. And guess what? A lot of people never showed up at the court dates. You did have a situation, though, with the Obama administration involving unaccompanied minors. And if you remember, Glenn Beck got a lot of attention back in 2014, 2015 for going down to the border with teddy bears for the kids. And uh, about the, the only media outlet that wanted to report on this stuff was the Daily Mail from the UK, which was tells you just how badly the American media handled the situation. These cages that the kids are being put in were built by Barack Obama and his administration. You see, there is a legitimate problem that people on the left who are screaming about these detentions and showing the pictures of the crying kids, what they are failing to report. The majority of the kids who are in those detention facilities are not with and have never been with their parents. They are kids who were either unaccompanied and made their way to the border without parents or they are kids who came to the United States with an adult posing as a parent and ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, discovered that that, that adult was not their parent, but a human trafficker. And for their own protection, they are being detained. Now, there is a court case called Roe versus Flores from, from the early 90s and subsequent um, enforcement actions and consent decrees entered into in California by the federal government. And... That case determined that kids can only be detained without their parents for 20 days. And once, they're, they, once they've been there for 20 days, they've got to be processed out to a third party. So we are running a foster system at the federal level for these kids because federal courts have said they can only be kept there for 20 days. But wait, there's more. You also cannot prosecute under Flores. You cannot prosecute the parents as long as they're with the kids. So you can't enforce the border and treat crossing it as a crime as long as the parents stay with their kids under this court decision. It was a consent decree by the federal government. So the only way to prosecute the crime of crossing the border illegally for someone who brings their kids is to separate the child from the parent. Now, what the federal government is doing, what the Trump administration is doing, what the media is not telling you they're doing is that they're telling these people that if they turn around and leave, they can go home with their kids. They don't have to stay and their kids aren't going to be separated from them. And many people are turning around and leaving, but some of them aren't because they decided they would take their chance. Many of them know the kid can only be held in detention for 20 days before leaving. It is a vastly more complicated situation than what the media would have you believe. Again, yes, parents are being separated from their kids. It is because of a federal court case from the 1990s that this is happening. The Trump administration is not exercising discretion in this. They are prosecuting any and all border crossings as a crime, which most Americans do support, by the way, even though they don't realize it forces then the kids to be separated from the parents. But what the media is not telling you when they show you the pictures of these crowded facilities, one, Barack Obama built them, not Donald Trump, and two, those aren't all kids who are separated from their parents. The majority of them are unaccompanied minors who came here without their parents, and the second largest portion are not those separated from their parents, but those the federal government has actually rescued from human traffickers, and they're trying to figure out what to do with them. 
You don't get that from the American media, which is so far gone in the tank of being part of La Resistance, they can't tell you the truth. They don't want to tell you the truth. Let me take a quick time out to thank this week's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now, you may not need a VPN. I do for my work, and I've been trying to find a good one that isn't going to break the bank. And it's sometimes very difficult, and it's hard to set up. For those of you who don't know what a VPN is, a virtual private network, uh, it lets you privately and securely use the Internet at fast speeds without being tracked by anyone. Oftentimes, you have companies that require you to have a VPN into their um, system and you just, you, sometimes you need them so you can't be tracked with all the news coming out about data hacks and breaches it's hard for me not to be worried about my digital privacy no matter what you do online your mobile carrier internet service providers they're tracking you doesn't matter what your cable company is or your phone company wherever you're getting your internet from you're probably being tracked with express vpn your internet data is encrypted your ip address is hidden express vpn covers less than seven bucks a month it's rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar and dozens of expert reviewers. It has easy-to-use apps that run seamlessly in the background of your computer, your phone, your tablet. Yes, you can use them on your phone and tablet. If you're on unsecure Wi-Fi and you want to keep hackers and spies from seeing your data, ExpressVPN is for you. Now, to take back your internet privacy today, to find out how you can get three free months, go to expressvpn.com slash Eric. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Eric for three months free with a one-year package. Every day you use the internet without ExpressVPN, you're putting sensitive information at risk, so don't put this off. Protect your online data with ExpressVPN today. Visit expressvpn.com slash Eric to learn more. It is 26 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. The phone number 404-872-0750, 1-800-WSB-TALK. Speaking of human trafficking, um, I, I want to play you uh, some audio from an interview I did here in Atlanta of a victim of human trafficking. And it's uh, Honestly, it's one of the very few times... I can never remember being at a loss for words in an interview. Just listen to this. I really am interested in how you were drawn into being a victim of human trafficking. So I'm from a suburban area um, in another state, and my father was just extremely abusive as far back as I can remember, which turned to sexual abuse, torture, um, all just a lot of just horrible things. And at 11, he started selling me for sex. Wow. Um, so was the relationship in human trafficking always with your father or at some point did he pass control to someone else over you? No, it was completely him. Um, and I didn't, I never even got out until I was almost 28 years old. And it was, he was the trafficker the entire time. It's, it's just, a, it's an amazing story. Uh, horrific in parts, um, and she escaped and now has dedicated her life to helping victims of human trafficking, a uh, story we don't talk a lot about. And in fact, the media with this border situation doesn't want to talk about the kids coming here. We're actually in a uh, situation now in the country where the majority of victims of human trafficking are now American citizens because of the security at the border stopping kids being trafficked into the country and, and the kids being taken from the traffickers. Uh, and this was a young lady who w was trafficked here in the United States by her father. Uh, it, the whole thing is an amazing interview. If you want to see the interview, text the word family to 345-345. Text family to 345-345. It's, it's part of my new show at CRTV.com. Just an amazing interview and, and relevant today with the subject of trafficking in the border. It is 39 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. The phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. Let's go to the phones to Rick in Oconee. Welcome, Rick. Rick? Well, 
I thought Rick was there. Let's put Rick on hold and see if he comes back to the phone. He was waiting for a while. Um, so the Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, Kristen Nielsen, held the White House press briefing today. Uh, there are reports coming out of CNN. I know, I know. There are reports out of CNN that Sarah Sanders did not want to do the briefing and take these questions on the kids after what happened last week. So they brought the Secretary of Homeland Security in, and here's a bit of the exchange. Can you simply say, are the children being used as pawns against the uh, a four wall? Yes or no? Can you say yes or no to that? The children are not being used as a pawn. We are trying to protect the children, which is why I'm asking Congress to act. Yes. yes. Yeah, not being used as pawns. See, a lot of people are thinking this is just Trump's ploy for getting a wall. Frankly, I think it should be. Uh, because if we have a wall, we don't have this problem. I mean, y'all, this isn't this isn't rocket science. We have a destabilizing situation south of us with Mexico. The Mexican state is literally crumbling as a government, and I, I use the word literally intentionally. I mean, it is crumbling, and. People are fleeing to the United States. And the Mexican cartel is using that to their advantage to flood the border with people funneling drugs and arms to MS-13 and the like. We can't turn a blind eye to that. Now, there are some ancillary issues here that we do need to delve into. Because one of the things you need to understand is the Obama administration policy and what the law actually is. The law does give discretion on how to treat crossing the border. It can be treated as a parking ticket, as I said, where you essentially give them a citation, tell them to show up for court, and many of them don't, or you can treat it as a crime. If you treat it as a crime, it's a, treat it as a misdemeanor crime. It's not a felony under federal law. It's not a felony. One of the bits of outrage from Republicans over separating kids from their parents is that if this is a misdemeanor, children should not be separated from their parents. The problem, though, is that there is a court case and there is some federal law that, that seems to indicate that if the president wants to pursue prosecution of parents, he has to separate the kids from the parents. Congress can fix that, but I think the Democrats want this as an issue for November, so I'm not sure they're, they have any incentive to fix it. And that's part of the problem that we're dealing with here is the raw politics of the situation. Now, as for the cages that the kids are in, and look, I, I'm not going to nuance it. These are, are rooms composed of chain link fence. They're cages. They're large cages, but they're cages. They were built by Barack Obama. They were not built by Donald Trump. Spare me your outrage over Donald Trump putting kids in cages. Barack Obama did it. Barack Obama built his administration, built the cages. His administration is the one that started putting the kids in cages. All Trump is doing is extending a policy that drew no outrage from the left until Donald Trump started doing it. Now, there is a change, though, as well that we need to talk about. Okay, so there are there is something we that we do need to discuss as far as the change in policy from the Trump administration. See, the Obama administration exercised discretion under federal law. They treated these things as parking tickets where people could get the citation leave, catch and release, they called it. And the only kids they held in detention were ones who were unaccompanied, they did not have parents with them, or the ones that there was a strong suggestion that they were being trafficked. They were with adults who did not appear to be their parents. The Obama administration held those kids. Now, under federal court decisions, they could only be held for 20 days and they had to be processed into a foster system. That foster system was moving the kids out uh, with family members already in the United States or volunteer couples who had been vetted. Uh, I have a problem with that in general just because I do not think a power of the federal government is running a foster care system. I think un under Article 1, Section 8, that's not constitutional. But then there's another issue in that uh, more than one of those kids wound up then getting into MS-13, the violent gang. 
What the Trump administration now is doing, though, is they're exercising no discretion at all. See, the Obama administration exercised discretion in holding the kids or doing catch and release. But the Ob- the Trump administration has decided zero tolerance policy. Because of a zero tolerance policy, anyone who comes into this country is going to be prosecuted for crossing the border illegally. Part of the problem there is that some of the people are coming and are legitimately seeking asylum. They're wanted by the drug cartels. They're, they're escaping bad situations. And the Trump administration is prosecuting those as well for crossing the border illegally and then diverting them into an asylum process. An asylum process takes longer than a deportation process. And those people's kids are getting sent off into the United States somewhere. And the Immigration and Homeland Security has done a terrible job tracking the kids. So many times the kids who are separated from the parents can't reconnect to their parents. And that's something that the right is missing in this conversation. The Democrats, though, don't want to do any separation. They don't want to do any separation because they pro- they want to prohibit prosecutions for border crossings. They want to treat it as never a crime to cross the border illegally. And that's nonsensical. And with their bill to keep families together, they're essentially, under that court case, Flores is the name of it, they essentially know that if their law were to pass, you wouldn't be able to prosecute anyone because under the Flores decision, if you're going to prosecute parents, you have to separate them from their kids. Their kids go to a detention facility while the parents go to jail. So the Democrats are trying to structure a compromise, and I'm using air quotes. You can't see it on radio, but I am. They do a compromise that essentially would prohibit the Trump administration from ever prosecuting someone from crossing the border illegally. And the media is not telling you that. They're trying to make it look like the Republicans are just blocking any effort to reunite parents with kids. And that's not it at all. The Democratic proposal would prohibit the federal government from being able to prosecute anyone from coming across the border illegally. All right, I think we have the phone lines fixed, so we're going to try this. Jeremy in Lawrenceville, you're what's called an experiment. How are you? Good. How's it it going, works. Sir? It works. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I was just wondering what the difference is. We have this happen in the United States every day where the children are ripped from their parents and sent to defects for one reason or another. So why aren't we up in arms about our own you know, Americans? Well, it, so th- there are a couple of differences that are worth noting. One is that uh, the federal government's not set up to run a defect style program, even though they are. But two, more importantly, um, in the system that the feds have set up with, with Immigration and Customs Enforcement, once the child is placed with the third party foster program, they're not tracked. So like DFACS in Georgia knows where all the foster kids are and can go retrieve them. Uh, once ICE puts a kid with the third-party family, they stop tracking them and have no idea. It's, it's voluntary reporting on the part of the host family. And that's something Congress has to address in the law. This is not ICE's fault, and it's not Donald Trump's fault. It's the way the law is written, and that is problematic. And that is one of the legitimate complaints people have about the system is that kids are placed into these third-party families and can disappear. There have been instances of of parents losing track of their kids in the system. It is worth noting that happened under Barack Obama, not under Donald Trump. Um, But it is is a legit concern. It is. Uh, And we got to figure out how to deal with that situation. Uh, But still, there's so much that's being said about this stuff that is not true. I want to continue breaking down some of the myths for you when we come back of what is and isn't true and what Congress can do and doesn't even need to do. It's nine after the hour. I'm Eric Erickson. This is WSB, the phone number 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk, this just in. Uh, Ted Cruz is releasing emergency legislation to keep families together 
in these detention facilities. Uh, y'all, he's on the ballot in Texas. Uh, I got a, John Cornyn has come out today and said something has to happen. Ted Cruz has come out today and said something has to happen. I, I got to suspect that there is something happening in the polling in Texas to have Ted Cruz and John Cornyn both come out today and demand immediate action on this. It, it isn't a popular issue. Laura Bush, of course, has come out and, and said it's it's immoral to separate parents from their children. Uh, Kellyanne Conway, the, the president's advisor, has come out and said uh, she, too, hates this policy, uh, but Congress needs to act to fix it. Paul Ryan has come out and said Congress is going to act. Uh, we will see what actually happens. If anything, the Democratic proposal, as I mentioned before we went to break, uh, is designed to ensure that no one can be prosecuted for crossing the border illegally um, because they don't want to account for the Flores court decision, uh, which requires that uh, parents and children be separated if the parents are going to be prosecuted. Uh, you, obviously, you, you got to send them to jail. You can't send the kids to jail, so you put the kids in a detention facility uh, for up to 20 days while you try to place them with someone. And the Democrats now want to prohibit that without actually uh, allowing a structure to continue the prosecution of people who come here illegally. There's there's got to be something, though, in the um, th- there's got to be something in the polling in Texas for Ted Cruz and John Cornyn to come out s- within an hour of each other and demand that action be taken. Now, Republicans don't much care for this either. And behind the scenes, some of them are rather aggravated with the president for exacerbating the situation. Um, they they think this hurts them. In November, I'm not so sure it does, except to the extent that I think everyone can agree. And in fact, I've seen a number of Trump supporters today pointing this out, that the the people who are commissioned with defending this plan, other than the Secretary of of, uh, Homeland Security, have, have done an abysmal job of it. The the Bannon folks who are still within the administration have bungled yet again on defense of a public policy for which they could make the credible case that the reason they're having to do this is a court case. Beyond that, there are issues of unaccompanied minors and minors being trafficked, and so they're having to do this. Um, there are ways around what is happening, but I got to agree with my buddy David French. Uh, let, let me read this to you. Uh, he just posted this in National Review a short time ago. One presidential administration into a, enters into a consent decree that creates a nationwide policy for the detention, release, and treatment of minors in the custody of federal immigration authorities and makes it binding on future administrations. Another administration unilaterally implements a catch-and-release policy for illegal immigrants that works to incentivize additional illegal immigration, including illegal immigration by families with kids. The next administration reverses course, adopting a so-called zero-tolerance policy that effectively combines with the consent decree to create a new punishment for the misdemeanor offense of illegal entry into the United States, family separation, including the separation of very young children from their parents. Think about the chain of events. A consent decree creates new law without a statute and without even regulatory rulemaking. Massive exercises of prosecutorial discretion can either effectively write a statute out of the U.S. Code or enhance its penalties well beyond the legislative intent. At each turn, the president doesn't just enforce the law, he makes the law, with Americans increasingly dependent on the character and wisdom of the man in the Oval Office to prevent abuse. The founders shudder. By the way, folks, I I know I have gone over a ton of the law tonight and how it actually applies, how Barack Obama applied it versus how Donald Trump is applying it, um, what the disparities are, what the media is leaving out, the situation south of the border. Uh, If you want to get this show to listen to it again um, so that you have all the details, if you miss something, text the word show to 444-999, text the word show to 444-999, and I will send you a podcast link back. Uh, so that you can get the podcast and listen to tonight's show. We'll post it here um, uh, a couple hours after the show is over so you can have it. Now, let me read from you. Senator Cruz introducing emergency legislation to keep illegal immigrant families together. Uh, According to Cruz, uh, all Americans are rightly horrified by the images we're seeing on the news. Children in tears pulled away from moms and dads. This must stop now. We can end this crisis by passing legislation I am introducing this week. Repeatedly, I visited detention facilities, tragically housing young children. 
For far too long, children have been the greatest victims of our broken immigration system, with tens of thousands of children who were detained under the Obama administration and continuing today, and with far too many of those children facing horrific physical or sexual assault from criminal human traffickers. The answer is not what Democrats are proposing, simply releasing illegal aliens and returning to the failed policy of catch and release. Rather, we should fix the backlog in immigration cases, remove the legal barriers of swift processing, and resolve asylum cases. So what's he doing? He's proposing families should stay together. Children belong with their mothers and fathers. Once their cases have been adjudicated under my legislation in no longer than 14 days, those who meet the legal standard should be granted asylum and those who don't should be immediately returned to their home country. So here are the bullet points. He's calling it the Protect Kids and Parents Act. Double the number of federal immigration judges from 375 to 750. Authorize new temporary shelters with accommodations to keep families together. Mandate that illegal immigrant families must be kept together absent aggravating criminal conduct or threat of harm. And provide for the expedited processing and review of asylum cases so that within 14 days, those who meet the legal standards will be granted asylum and those who do not will be immediately returned to their home countries. Now, obviously, there are some problems here in that uh, going from 375 to 750 immigration judges um, will require some hiring in there. But still is a way to move forward with this situation. Um, I got to tell you, just from a political optic standpoint, this does two things. One, it will rally the Republican base to the president because immigration is an issue that the base despises the Republican establishment on and loves Donald Trump for. And the Republican base will gravitate to and lock in around Donald Trump on this. The other thing this will do, though, is independent voters, by and large, are not fans of this policy. And they will move further away from the Republican Party. And who is an independent voter in America? Doesn't matter what pollster you talk to, Democrat or Republican, an independent voter is a Republican who's ashamed of the Republican Party. Moderate, self-identified moderates in this country are Democrats ashamed of the Democratic Party. Independents in this country are Republicans ashamed of the Republican Party. And they don't like separating parents from kids. And they blame Donald Trump, and it is not fair to do so, because this is a Barack Obama problem. He started it. But one thing that Donald Trump is doing that he has every right to do, but that is exacerbating the situation, is that President Trump is now not exercising discretion. The law is written to allow the president to exercise discretion. And what Donald Trump is doing is saying there will be no discretion, 100% prosecution, 100% separation. And that is allowing people to draw outrage. It is allowing the media to paint this in absurd terms. So much of what the media is saying distorts the picture of what's happening. And Republicans can listen to talk radio, they can listen to Fox News, they can get a more accurate picture. But a lot of people aren't going to do that. All they're going to hear is that Donald Trump is separating kids from their parents. This could have been handled better by better communications within the White House press shop, but they're too busy fighting each other over who's leaking what to serve the president. This is really a failure of the president's staff to serve him because the policy itself is just an extension of what Barack Obama did. It amped up, definitely, but Barack Obama was doing it too. And the White House isn't even able to push back on that. They're just, they're too busy fighting each other on other stuff. Let me take a quick time out to thank this week's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now, you may not need a VPN. I do for my work, and I've been trying to find a good one that isn't going to break the bank. And it's sometimes very difficult, and it's hard to set up. For those of you who don't know what a VPN is, a virtual private network, uh, it lets you privately and securely use the Internet at fast speeds without being tracked by anyone. Oftentimes, you have companies that require you to have a VPN into their um, system and you just, you, sometimes you need them so you can't be tracked with all the news coming out about data hacks and breaches it's hard for me not to be worried about my digital privacy no matter what you do online your mobile carrier internet service providers they're tracking you doesn't matter what your cable company is or your phone company wherever you're getting your internet from you're probably being tracked with express vpn your internet data is encrypted your ip address is hidden express vpn covers less than seven bucks a month 
It's rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar and dozens of expert reviewers. It has easy-to-use apps that run seamlessly in the background of your computer, your phone, your tablet. Yes, you can use them on your phone and tablet. If you're on unsecure Wi-Fi and you want to keep hackers and spies from seeing your data, ExpressVPN is for you. Now, to take back your Internet privacy today, to find out how you can get three free months, go to expressvpn.com slash Eric. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Eric for three months free with a one-year package. Every day you use the Internet without ExpressVPN, you're putting sensitive information at risk. So don't put this off. Protect your online data with ExpressVPN today. Visit expressvpn.com slash Eric to learn more. It is 26 after the hour. Eric Erickson here. Um, When I was in D.C. last month, I interviewed Michelle Rickett with She Is Safe, which is a nonprofit that travels the globe battling human trafficking. And we talked about uh, immigrants coming into this country who are trafficked. Listen to this excerpt. The incidence of human trafficking is extremely high among the immigrant population. And uh, most every traffic victim in the United States, an immigrant, comes here believing that they're going to have a better life. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but often when they arrive, it's a bait and switch. Their passport, their identity papers are taken from them. They are told that they owe a huge debt. And if they go to law enforcement, they will be taken into custody. Their family back home will be harmed. But as we talked about earlier, there are also lots of U.S. citizens, lots of kids, boys, girls, men and women, but particularly uh, boys and girls who are most at risk of trafficking because they're perhaps in a vulnerable situation like I was, where you're having a lot of difficulty and you're a teen and you start thinking, wow, I think I could do better on my own. It's just the whole thing is a fascinating look into trafficking and it doesn't get a lot of coverage. It is a huge, huge issue in Georgia. Human trafficking is Uh, and it is a lot of immigrants, uh, particularly those smuggled across the border uh, from the south of us. It's one of the things the Trump administration is trying to stop. It doesn't get a lot of attention and it should. Uh, Now, that interview was with Michelle Rickett from She is Safe. They travel the globe fighting human trafficking. Uh, If you'd like to hear the entire interview and see it, uh, frankly, we got to have subscribers to keep these interviews going. Uh, Text the word family to 345-345. Text family to 345-345. It's all part of CRTV. My new show is there. Uh, It launched yesterday on Father's Day. And, you know, so they were going to do the first episode was going to be on on how to pray for your family, which was great for Father's Day. And then they swapped it at the last minute and they put the human trafficking one on Father's Day. Real downer topic for Father's Day. Nonetheless, uh, it fits this week. uh, And and the data there is so important for people to understand what's going on and why the Trump administration is trying to fight human trafficking. So text FAMILY to 345-345. You can hear the full interview and my interview with a victim of human trafficking who now fights traffickers and uh, helps those who have been trafficked. When we come back, uh, we got to get into the Supreme Court decision today on gerrymandering and a little more on immigration and what Ted Cruz is trying to do. It is 39 after the hour. The phone number is 404-872-0750-1800. WSB Talk. We have the... Phone issue settled. Um, by the way, quick check of the radar. Raining in the Roswell Sandy Springs area. Strong storm just to the west of Sandy Springs. Uh, those of you in Sandy Springs are lucky because it's headed west of you towards Marietta. I uh, don't know that it'll make it there. It's, it's raining pretty hard. Otherwise, uh, uh, mostly clear in the area. A few scattered showers around. Nothing, nothing significant though. Um, Related to all of this division, first of all, it is worth noting how immigration is a very divisive issue among Republicans. And the reason I think it is a divisive issue among Republicans is because Republicans are the ones who have tried to do something about it. The Obama administration controlled both the White House and the Congress for two years 
after George W. Bush had tried to do immigration reform and failed because of Republican divisions. And the Democrats had it for two years, had everything for two years, and promised to do something and never did. The reason is because they wanted the issue. They didn't want the fix. Republicans have, at least to their credit, um, despite a lot of acrimony and division within Republican ranks, the uh, Republicans have tried, by and large, to come up with a solution. And it has divided them badly and is back to dividing them. And on top of that issue, it is worth pointing out that the response from people in the White House has been disastrous. And I don't even mean the president here. Um, the Secretary of Homeland Security is saying that the intention of separating children from their families is not to disincentivize illegal immigration. Let me say that again, because you may have missed it in all the media coverage of this. The Secretary of Homeland Security today said that separating children from their parents has nothing to do with trying to disincentivize illegal immigration, trying to discourage it. She said it is because of uh, unaccompanied minors and child predators that they've got to be separated. And there is a federal court case, uh, the Flores case, that they have to contemplate. That is significant because John Kelly, the White House chief of staff, gave an interview a couple of weeks ago on this very issue and said that they were separating kids from parents to disincentivize and discourage illegal immigration. You have the White House Chief of Staff and the Secretary of Homeland Security giving com – and by the way, the Secretary of Homeland Security was the Deputy Chief of Staff of the White House and the Deputy Homeland Security Advisor to John Kelly who pushed her to be the Secretary of Homeland Security. They have a great relationship, and yet they have in, the, in a time span of two weeks given diametrically opposed opinions – on why the separation is happening. That's not good from a messaging standpoint. The politics of this aren't good. The fact that you've got Ted Cruz rushing out to do what he's calling emergency legislation to solve this is a pretty good idea that this isn't selling well in Texas. In fact, I know Texas Republicans down there who are freaking out about this because thus far, Republican or Hispanics in Texas have been voting Republican. And the polling is suggesting that, that they're starting to abandon the GOP over this in Texas. Now, you may think we need to round them all up and deport them, and you may think that we need to separate families. But politics is something you also have to consider, even though you don't want to. You think you're above it. You think it's beneath you. You don't think you should have to consider it. The fact is, if you lose Hispanic voters in Texas, you've lost Texas. Because right now they're voting with the GOP. And if you've lost Texas, you've lost Republican control of everything. And so you got to contemplate the politics here. And the politics are this. The White House had a policy that was just an expansion of what Barack Obama already did. And there were ways regarding that to defend it. And they didn't do that. They screwed up the defense of it. And this isn't the fault of the president. This is the fault of people around him who did a terrible job selling this policy on the president's behalf. And that's just the reality of the situation. Now, in other news today, the United States Supreme Court has punted on gerrymandering, and they're probably doing the Democrats a favor on this. Democrats went to court trying to get a declaration from the Supreme Court that partisan gerrymandering is unconstitutional. Never mind, it's been going on since the very founding of the country. They wanted the Supreme Court do-gooders to say it was bad and needed to stop. And there are a lot of people pushing this. Oh, it's so bad. It's unconstitutional. Republicans are drawing districts. Now, now there's been plenty of statistical research out there, by the way, showing that Republicans, if partisan gerrymandering weren't legal, Republicans would actually fare better because of situations like California, Pennsylvania, New York, Illinois, and elsewhere. Um, then the Supreme Court did the Democrats a favor by refusing to rule on partisan gerrymandering, uh, essentially saying that there was no standing for the various individuals. That means that there are some people, you don't have the right to just go to court. You've got to have an actual grievance, uh, and it's got to affect you. And the Supreme Court said that the people who were complaining in the Maryland and Wisconsin case, they didn't have standing. The grievance didn't actually affect them, so they couldn't bring the, they should never have brought the case to court. Uh, and what this does is it allows the Democrats to reset the clock for 2020. 
Uh, because the fact of the matter is the only reason Democrats have fared so poorly in redistricting over the last number of years is because they had a terrible election year in 2010 uh, when overwhelmingly state houses and, uh, and state legislatures went to the GOP. And they then in 2011, uh, after the census, redrew the lines. Well, 2020 is coming and Democrats probably will have a good time just looking at the status quo right now if that were to continue. And so they may be able to pick up some state legislatures in 2020. It may benefit them. Anthony Kennedy and, and um, the, the, the justices of the Supreme Court may have actually done the Democrats a favor by punting this case. Uh, and frankly, you know, it, the courts have no business being involved in redistricting. It is an inherently political matter. The courts need to stay out of inherently political matters. It is 53 after the hour. Back to the phones we go. Jerry and Mableton, welcome. Hey, Eric. Hey. Uh, the, with regard to the current immigration issue, there's so many of them. I've lost track yeah. about separating uh children from their families, there's three things I want to ask you about. Which is more important? Following the law, which it appears that the Trump administration is trying to do that, the politics of the, of the issue, the Democrats are pouncing on what's going on at the border, and the Republicans appear to be getting squeamish. And then the optics of it, which shows up on the evening news, which appears to be changing public opinion. Yeah, and by the way, speaking of the evening news, see, uh, ABC News is about to have a report here on Jamie Dupree any second. Right. Um, Jamie, it's good to hear him again today. Yes, it is. Oh, okay, so I, I got to say uh, and, not or. Um, following the law should be most important, but we can't ignore the fact that this law has massive amounts of discretion for the executive. Uh, and so you got to ask yourself, uh, how much discretion should the Trump administration apply or not? Uh, and arguably they have exercised zero. In fact, they're saying we're going to exercise zero discretion to force the issue, which is then causing bad optics for the Republicans in general as they head into a midterm with the wind already against them. Uh, have they so, lost control of the message? I, I think they have because they didn't do it to begin with, and that's the problem. That's my biggest criticism here. Look, I don't like the policy, but I could defend it better than the jokers in Washington are defending it. I mean, there well, are actually <laughs> legitimate reasons for doing a policy like this, and you would never know it by listening to the Trump administration, which is just – I mean, I've got a buddy of mine who is – he works for a senator who loves Trump – and he is pounding his head on the wall. Literally today, he, he did a head on his desk moment uh, when, when the Trump administration said something dumb about this. He's like, I could defend this policy. Why aren't they defending it? Well, they're too busy defending each other or trying to one-up each it's other inside leaking. the Trump administration. Yes, they are. That They are leaking. Jerry, look, thanks very much for the phone call. Listen, no dispute with Jerry here. Following the law is most important. But let's not deny the fact that Congress essentially created a law that allows the president maximum discretion. And President Trump has dialed it up to 11, and he's bragging about dialing it up in order to put pressure on Congress. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is that the jokers in the White House who work for the president are so busy stabbing each other in the back that they are not willing to come up with an articulable defense of this policy, which is it is an extension of Barack Obama's policy. There is a federal court order in place that they have to comply with by keeping the kids separate from the parents if they're going to prosecute people for crossing the border illegally. The prior administration refused to prosecute people crossing the border illegally. There is an uptick in people crossing the border illegally. Therefore, we need to do it as a crime because of the court order. We have to separate the kids. And, oh, by the way, many of the kids who are coming are victims of human trafficking and not actually with their parents. There's your defense. Why the heck people in the Trump administration aren't out there every day just quoting that i have no idea but they should because it's a defense don't forget text the word family to 345-345 tonight and see that whole interview i did